the extremely connected online environment of today, nothing can operate at its best in isolation. A job is almost always accomplished with the cooperation of multiple entities. E-commerce apps must interact with payment systems, banking systems and other systems as well in order to process payments and access client accounts. The core of what makes online services useful today is the capacity of independent online systems to communicate with one another and share data. One of the many methods for facilitating communication between online services is the use of webhooks. Hello everyone and welcome to this video by Intellipart. In this video, I will be talking about webhooks. You may have noticed that webhooks are stated in the settings for your apps and questioned whether you ought to use them. In a nutshell, the answer is undoubtedly yes. Let's now take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we'll see what exactly is a webhook and what are webhooks used for. Moving on, we'll understand how do webhooks work and we'll also understand the difference between webhooks and polling. Moving on, we'll see when to use webhooks along with webhook configuration, webhook payload and what are the webhook best practices. As we reach the end of this video, we'll take a look at the advantages and disadvantages along with a few examples of sites that use webhooks and lastly, a conclusion. Now before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon for regular updates from us. So let us begin by understanding what is a webhook. A webhook is an HTTP request that is sent to a destination system frequently with a payload of data in response to an occurrence in the source system. Webhooks are automated, so when the event fires in the source system, they are immediately sent out. As a result, when an event happens, one system, that is the source, can speak which is send an HTTP request to another system which is the destination and exchange data which is also called the request payload about the event. Now what are webhooks used for? I am confident that you have an idea of what webhooks are used for based on the definition above. Simply stated, webhooks are used to notify other systems of the occurrence of an event in one system and they frequently share data as well. However, it's always simpler to explain something with an example. So let us take a look at an actual use case for webhooks. Consider that you use a streaming program and your bank must notify you via SMS or email when your credit card is debited at the start of each month. When your card is charged, the banking system, which is the source, can use a webhook to contact a mailing or SMS service, which is the destination, to send you an instant debit notice. In order to create an appropriate message for you, the client, the mailing service or the SMS service also receives information about the charge from the banking system. Now how do webhooks work? Starting with the webhook request process, a system must be capable of supporting the procedure in order to send webhooks. Although you can program your system to transmit webhooks by setting off HTTP requests in response to various kinds of events, SaaS platforms like GitHub, Shopify, Stripe, Twilio and Slack are the ones that use webhooks most frequently. These platforms enable various event types depending on the actions that take place there. Your application's destination endpoint will receive a webhook request, so you must create it and submit the URL as the event's webhook URL. You will start receiving webhook requests at the target URL you specified once the webhook registration for an event is complete and the endpoint has been added. Second, consuming a webhook. You must get ready to accept webhook requests now that you have registered to receive them. Regular HTTP queries should be treated the same way as webhooks. The webhook provider always has documentation detailing how to implement webhook URL endpoints to accept requests and if accessible, access payloads. The contents of webhooks are serialized form encoded JSON or XML files. Webhooks are one way of communication mechanism, but it's best practice to send the source application a 200 or 302 status code in order to acknowledge receipt. Originally, since some source applications may submit the same webhook request more than once, it is advised to make the webhook request operation it impotent at your end. In situations like these, you want to make sure that your answer to a webhook request is unique because doing so could compromise the system. Third is webhooks post or get. Depending on the webhooks provider, you might receive webhook queries as get or post requests. Simple get webhook requests add the payload as query string to the conclusion of the webhook URL. Post webhook requests 
may also include properties like authentication credentials in the request body in addition to their payload. Now let us look at webhooks versus polling. When your application uses polling, it occasionally calls an API to see if an event has happened or if new data has been added. On the other hand, when an event happens in real time, webhooks hands in data to your application. Polling is like visiting the post office to see if you have any new mail, which is a simple way to compare and contrast these two methods. By providing the postman with your home location using webhooks, you can essentially have mail delivered to your house each time you receive new mail. While webhooks only make network queries when there is new information, polling uses more resources because it may take several network requests before new information is found. Now we'll look at webhook configuration. Webhook configuration is the process of setting up webhooks in an application to allow real-time communication with other applications. The configuration process varies depending on the application and the type of event being triggered, but there are some common steps to follow when configuring webhooks. The first step in webhook configuration is to determine which events will trigger the webhook. This could include events such as a new user signing up for a service, a payment being made, or a product being added to a shopping cart. Once the events have been identified, the application needs to provide a way for users to register their webhook endpoint URL. Now let's look at webhook payload. The webhook payload is the data that is sent from the sending application to the receiving application when a webhook event is triggered. The payload typically contains information about the event that is triggered such as the event type, timestamp and any relevant data associated with the event. The structure of the webhook payload can vary depending on the sending and receiving applications and can be formatted in various data types such as JSON, XML or form encoded data. The payload should include all the necessary information that the receiving application needs to process the webhook request and update its own data. For example, if a webhook is triggered when a new order is placed in an e-commerce platform, the payload could include information such as the customer's name, email address, the product's order, the order total, and the shipping address. This information could then be used by the receiving application to update its own order database and trigger other actions such as sending an order confirmation email to the customer. Now we'll look at webhook best practices. Webhook best practices include using HTTPS for secure transmission, implementing retries and timeouts to handle failures, and logging webhook activity for troubleshooting purposes. Additionally, the sending and receiving applications should agree on a shared schema or format for the webhook payload, and the payload should only contain necessary data to minimize the risk of sensitive information being exposed. Finally, finally, testing webhooks thoroughly before deploying them in production is crucial to ensure their reliability and effectiveness. Now we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of webhooks. Starting with advantages, real-time data transfer. Webhooks can instantly trigger actions in response to events, enabling real-time data transfer and reducing delays. Second is reduced server load. By eliminating the need for polling or scheduled batch processes, webhooks can reduce server load and improve efficiency. Third is flexibility. Webhooks can be used in a variety of contexts and can be implemented in many programming languages and frameworks. Fourth is automation. Webhooks can automate many routine tasks such as data entry or notification triggers, freeing up time for more important work. Fifth is improved data accuracy. With real-time data transfer and fewer manual processes, webhooks can improve data accuracy and reduce the risk of errors. Moving on to the disadvantages, starting with security risks. Webhooks can be potentially exploited by attackers if not properly secured, leading to data breaches or other security incidents. Second is fail requests. Webhooks rely on network connectivity and fail requests can occur if the recipient server is unavailable or the payload is malformed. Third is monitoring and maintenance. Webhooks require ongoing monitoring and maintenance to assure reliability and security, which can be a resource-intensive task. Fourth, implementation complexity. Setting up and configuring webhooks can be complex, especially if multiple systems are involved. Fifth, lack of standardization. There is no standard format for webhooks, 
which can lead to compatibility issues and additional complexity when integrating different systems. Now we'll look at when to use webhooks. Real time is the important phrase here. When you want, use webhooks to real time awareness of an occurrence in a connected system, real time communication of information, find a less expensive method of voting. Now we'll look at examples of scenarios like these. First, an online store informing your invoicing program of a transaction, e-commerce sites alerting vendors when an item is out of supply, merchants are informed of payments by the payment processor, notifying team members of a change to repository using version control systems, system monitoring that notifies administrators when there is a problem or a strange behavior in a system. Finally, Information across systems is synchronized, so when a user updates their email address in your HR or CRM system, it is also updated in the payroll or billing system for instance. Now we'll look at examples of sites that use webhooks. Starting with Twilio webhooks disseminate details about occurrences like phone calls, delivered SMS messages and authentication. Second, Slack webhooks allow apps to send messages into Slack. Third. Webhooks for Discord publish communications into challenges. Fourth, webhooks from Shopify sync with the platform and run code when an event occurs in your shop. And finally, when an event happens in your account, Stripe webhooks send your application a notification. In conclusion, the web is ruled by information and obtaining information instantly boosts the efficiency and responsiveness of online services. A simple method of enabling real-time information sharing between online sites is provided by Webhooks technology. Fanning out is the process of distributing a single Webhook request to numerous locations that need the data. This improves information distribution across the web and enables source systems to communicate with more apps. With that, we come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati, the course link of which is given in the description below.